If you want to learn something about God, shut your mouth and listen to me for a minute. Many, many children healed. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because the growth cells have stopped. I don't make this stuff up. Behold the atheist's nightmare. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Why do they teach every other theory in science except creation? Warlocks are enemies of God. No one's ever going to convince me that uh, that the word of God is, is not true. You know, if you put Jesus Christ first, that he'll look after all your bills. And so the devil said, okay, it's a deal. And if you want to tell me how to live my life, it better line up with the word of God or shut your mouth. I'm loaded. I'm pregnant with miracles. What do you believe? Send us the cash. Welcome to the Bible Dumb Podcast. <laughs> I am your host, Davy Hell. And I'm Jesse Hill. And uh, as always, special thanks to executive producer Terry Lynn Bradford. Thank you, Terry. And uh, I am excited that this is our first episode of season two. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> Done <laughs> with Genesis. Yeah. Moving on. To the second book of Moses, called Exodus. I'm ready for this. Yeah. Big deal. Big deal. Big deal. Uh, favorite part of Genesis overall? Mm -hmm. First thing comes to mind. What you got? The the coat, the colored coat and the dreams. Oh, that's just too recent, huh? I don't know. That was like the most entertaining part, right? Yeah, it was pretty good. The it was Handmaid's the most, Tale. It was the, the Handmaid's Tale was story pretty good. that we got. Yeah, Handmaid's Tale was good. I loved the whales. <laughs> the whales. <laughs> just in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I enjoyed it. That was the most story-like part. I enjoyed part. The, Yeah, the, Joseph's the Joseph story. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I guess we got to still think about what happened last time. So he... I don't know. I know Jacob died. Oh, yeah, didn't he die like three times? <laughs> yeah, he got to that. I'm going to die now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Joseph got his own place in Egypt, right? Oh, yeah. And they'd, he divided all the lands out to the different... Oh, yeah, to the... To Jacob's different sons. Twelve tribes? I think so. Twelve tribes. That sounds right. That sounds familiar. And then they buried Jacob... <laughs> what you thought was in a pyramid <laughs> was it not in a pyramid well no it was just in the egyptian in burial egypt. place okay. yeah so i mean i'm laughing at you but it, maybe you know it's not a, i don't know yeah maybe they did say they embalmed him mm -hmm. so he might be a mummy might be might be v mummy i don't know but, Is that uh, why Christians make it their excuse to go in and take whatever they want? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was large. <laughs> what? I don't even know what you're referencing. <laughs> they just go into whatever lands and take whatever they want. Oh, I think that's more of just like cultural. Capitalism. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, not necessarily. I don't know a whole lot about the Crusades, but pretty much go in and take, <laughs> take your whole... What you want. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think the Crusades are in the Bible. I think they're well after. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I don't even know what century the Crusades happened in. Do you? I do not remember. That was a long time ago that we took that history class. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember ever, ever being in any of my history classes. No, I remember learning about it. I remember it being like mentioned in passing. Mm -hmm. It was brief, but we did talk about it. All right. Well, it's fun. We're back to chapter one. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> of Exodus. At chapter one, Exodus. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Are they really going to go through yeah, again, they're going to tell us all 12 <sighs> names, but that's it. Okay. Stay okay, with us. Just Don't 12. turn off the podcast now. <laughs> so here are the names. Reuben, 
Remember him? Mm -hmm. Simeon. Levi. I know Levi was one of the people that murdered all the circumcised people. Oh, yeah. Judah. He was the one with the three sons. Yeah, the three sons that God killed, and he ended up having to impregnate his daughter-in-law mm -hmm. yeah. himself. Yeah. Yeah. Issachar, <laughs> our favorite. <laughs> the Pokemon name. Zebulun and Benjamin. Dan and Naphtali. Gad and Asher. All right. All right, these are the 12 that have their lands yeah. in Israel. Yeah. Or what is now in Israel? In Egypt. They came into Egypt. Okay. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. All right. Goodbye, Joseph. Bye-bye. <laughs> It and was the, fun. Yeah, it was fun. Nice knowing you. Give up the ghost. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies, and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore... Oh, hold on, that's what the new Egyptian people are yeah, saying? Yeah, that's okay, what the new right. king in oh. Egypt is saying. He says he didn't know Joseph back when he was like, getting all the Pharaoh's mm -hmm. favor. Mm -hmm. And says, get these people out of here. Yeah, get them out. We're going to join our enemies if we have a war. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramazes. Yeah, Ramazes. Hmm. Is that like King Tut? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But they, uh, yeah, so I guess they just went in there like, okay, not now you're not only our citizens or our, I mean, they're just straight up slaves now. I guess everybody's slave to the king. Yeah. So, but now they got them like building shit. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because the... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the more they worked them the more they just had to go home and make more babies, make more babies. <laughs> <laughs> and they were grieved because of the children of Israel and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor this is like rent when he's just like, ooh, I got a new word. Rigor. Rigor, rigor, <laughs> rigor, rigor. <laughs> yeah. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. Whoa. Yeah. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Oh, they're going to be killed. So that's like a sneaky way to get rid of these yeah. people he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. He just says kill all the male children. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then you can have the... The women and slaves and the, the men just eventually all die out. Yeah. I guess so. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, 
for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. So I guess they are having the babies. <laughs> They're pushing more than the Egyptian women do, and they have the babies before the midwives even get there. That's what they're so. saying. It's kind of a. I feel like that's very judgmental towards the Egyptian women. I guess so. <laughs> I feel like that's probably not true. Well, no, we know it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> they're lying. They're definitely lying. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied. And waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. All right, so he's sticking with this plan. Mm -hmm. Throw the babies in the river. Sounds like... Uh, the Spartans who would throw the weaklings or the small off a cliff it's so that fair. they would be mighty, a mighty nation. No, not fair, not nice. Sometimes kids are late bloomers, you know? Sometimes you, you're born small and you grow huge. Yeah, or you sometimes you're just really fucking cool and small. Yeah, <laughs> like... yeah. That too. <laughs> This obsession with being big. I don't know. <laughs> I've known some really cool small people. All right. Well, that's not what he's doing. He's killing all the men. Yeah. Or male children. All right. Chapter two. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months and when she could not longer hide him she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink and his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him and the daughter of pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the river's side and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go, and the maid went, and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child, and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. Whoa! Whoa, Moses has entered the name. chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he was adopted. Yeah. All right. Yeah, put in the river in a little basket. Does this sound After familiar? After being hidden. No, I knew none of this. After being hidden for three months. Three months. All right. I guess she thought, like, maybe once he's three months, maybe he has a better shot of surviving on yeah, his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old Mowgli. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. This sounds a lot like Jungle Book. <laughs> so, All right. So. Yeah, put him in the river. See, that's a pretty famous story of Moses being sent down the river in the little woven Over. boat I've yeah, as a baby and someone finding him. Uh, and she called his name Moses and she said, because I drew him out of the water. So I guess Moses means <laughs> drawn out of the water. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. Can we pause? I kind of find it surprising that he knows. I'm surprised they didn't just raise him as Egyptian. Yeah. Come. Well, the Pharaoh's daughter gave him to a Hebrew woman to nurse, right? Yeah. 
But then it said then she didn't say then she like. It just skipped like his whole life and just said now he's grown. I felt like it insinuated that she adopted him. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. Yeah. Yeah. So it just said it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I read it. It said it, but I completely <laughs> missed it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's weird. It just surprises me that they wouldn't just be like, no, you're Egyptian. You're not like the Hebrew Bruce. No, I mean, I wonder if they have, I mean, you wouldn't think so, but I wonder if they have distinguishing characteristics at this point. Like, they already, like, don't look Egyptian. Like, they have either, Maybe. like, more curly hair or lighter skin or, I don't know. Yeah. Could, I mean, and they also speak a different language. Well, yeah, but if he's raised with them, then he'd be speaking their language. Yeah, but she knew, like, that he was sent down the river. So if, like, there's this whole culture... That exists, and they speak a different language, and maybe they look a tat, tiny bit different, or dress differently, and then you need to find the baby. You're going to remember that it's not, that it's of a different race. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, the culture is already firmly established as distinct from the Egyptian culture. They've been using them for slaves this whole time. Yeah. There's this new thing where you have to kill all the babies, and so she found, like, you know, it's like a... Even though, like, it's like a British person finds, like, an Irish person or something. Okay, yeah. But like, back I, in the day when they... But what I was saying was, like, I'm surprised that she didn't just raise him as if he was... Oh, and try to fool everybody? As well as him. You know, there are plenty of people that adopt children and, like, never tell them that they're adopted until they're, like, 18. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know. I guess she was honest with him. Maybe there it was characteristic differences, too. Could be. All right. And then, uh, so Moses was grown. He went out to his breath. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. So he, Moses was born of Levi, of Levi's line. Yeah. So not the firstborn. No. Not even of Joseph's line. Interesting. He's one of the ones that wanted to seek punishment for what was uh dinah's yeah dinah got raped defiled yeah. by he was the one that was like hell no yeah and levi went in there and killed everybody mm -hmm. with i think simeon and maybe some others uh and they did that and then we didn't hear anything else about him other than he probably mm -hmm. helped throw joseph in the pit <laughs> yeah but uh, I think it's interesting that it's no longer like following this direct lineage like it did in the beginning where Abraham blessed. Well, he got blessed. Who came after yeah. Abraham? Dude, I already forgot. Jacob? No. Isaac. Isaac. And then <laughs> Isaac accidentally blessed Jacob. And then Jacob, I guess, blessed all 12 mm -hmm. of his favorite kids. Yeah. Or has Isaac only got one blessing? Yeah. <laughs> Jacob got 12. And then, uh, yeah. So I just thought it was interesting. Like, we spent all this time talking about Joseph and how great Joseph was. I just would have assumed that Moses would be of Joseph's line. But no. No. Joseph's just important because he brought them all to Egypt. Yeah. Interesting. Served his purpose. Yeah. And then <laughs> as soon as his purpose was served, the Bible's like, he's dead. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Moses is out there, and he sees an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Oh, oh dude. Moses. Already smiting people. Nice. Maybe Moses will be a cool dude. Maybe. He might be the first cool dude. He might be the first cool dude of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, neat. Adam was kind of cool. Adam? Wasn't he kind of cool? He didn't really do anything. Yeah, he didn't really do anything. <laughs> he just uh, ate an apple. <laughs> That's about it. He was easily influenced by Eve, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> A simp for Eve. <laughs> They had a good relationship, you could tell. 
Mm. Yeah, I got a soft spot for them. I think they're pretty cool. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thy... And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thy, thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedst the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Oh, I guess okay, Moses so... thought he was being sneaky when he killed the Egyptian, but apparently it's known that he did it. So why are they mad at him? It's the Hebrew men that are mad at him. Right, he came across two Hebrew men like fighting, and he came over to scold them and say, hey, why are you fighting him? He's one of us. Oh, Moses said that. Yeah, oh, and the guy's okay. like, you're no one to tell me what to do. You uh, you killed an Egyptian. Okay. And Moses is like, oh, shit. Cover's blown. Yeah. Interesting. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. I just feel like in any other story or real life, the Hebrews would have like kept it secret, kept it safe. There's no way that secret was getting out. Yeah, I mean, no one was around. He looked. He looked left. Yeah, he looked no. right. He must have blabbed. Moses must have had a big mouth. Uh, he was bragging to somebody, and then the secret got out. Everybody knows now. Maybe. That's the only way. That's the only way, because I, mean, I don't... Unless, like, there was somebody hiding that he didn't see. But... Also, like, how are there Hebrew men still around? I thought all the babies were getting killed. I guess it's still a relatively new... Well, he's... I don't know. I mean, Maybe Moses old. has got to be old enough to kill a man. He's got to be at grown. least a teenager. That's all we know is that he's grown. Yeah. He's got to be at least a teenager. I mean, I guess it could have been two 40-year-old men fighting. Yeah, they could have been older men. I guess so. I don't know how long the babies have been being drowned in the river. Since before Moses. Yeah. That's true. That's weird. The story doesn't quite I don't know up. if they're getting all of them either. I don't know. And I feel like Maybe. older people would have been like, we need to band together. They would have known that more than like some young teenage kids who would be more likely to go blab. Yeah. Maybe know. not. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew water enough for us, and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Where is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. So I guess Moses, they called Moses an Egyptian. So I guess he's passing for an Egyptian. Yeah, or he's just living with the Egyptians. So maybe they see him as like a traitor. They don't know if they can fully trust him. Oh, I don't know. I, don't know. I think they probably look the same. I think so. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. I've heard that. Yeah, it's a Robert Heinlein book, Stranger in a Strange Land. I've never read it. Interesting. I wish I had now. Huh. I did not know that it was a Bible quote, though. No. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, that's like probably the best writing we've had, Stranger in a Strange Land. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty good. I can see why Highland took that. Do you know what that book is about? No clue. It's a sci-fi novel. Oh. In 
Interesting. We'll have to read that. Oh, I'm so down to read that. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure I bought it not too long ago. <laughs> Boom. See that red book? Really cool looking book. Hold on. Yes, I see it. I see it. I see it. It's there. You got to look at it, though. It's so cool looking. Beautiful. He just had what? some like really pretty reprints. You want me to read what it's about? Please do. Raised by Martians on Mars, Valentine Michael Smith is a human who has never seen another member of his species. Sent to Earth, he is a stranger who must learn what it is to be a man. But his own beliefs and his powers far exceed the limits of humankind, and as he teaches grokking and water-sharing, he also inspires a transformation that will alter Earth's inhabitants forever. That sounds pretty good. Uh, that sounds pretty good. After we get done with Moses, we'll have to read that, and I bet it's just a retelling of Moses' story. Yeah, add this to the list of books to read. Yeah. Yeah, I'm totally down to read that. that. Sounds amazing. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. It sounds like God forgot about them for yeah, a while. Yeah, God was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Dude. I remember those dudes. <laughs> they were pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My bad, bros. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got, I got stuck playing this game. Uh, I really see, forgot yeah, about y'all. Yeah, I was playing... <laughs> <laughs> this block puzzle <laughs> look at that look up and next thing i know you're in bondage <laughs> so that's the end of chapter two pretty cool i'm liking this story this is okay we've gotten into like a much more storytelling mode yes. than genesis yes like we're starting with the beginning of Moses. We're finding out like how he was born in the situation that influences his later life. Stuff's happening. Stuff has consequences. It's not just like, and then the city was destroyed. And then she turned to salt. And then he had sex with his children. And then the, it was not like the and then, and then, and then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like this is what um, I've heard before when people talk about why George R. R. Martin is such a great author is that he doesn't do and then in his writing style. Like a lot of children, when you hear children write stories, they say like, and then a leprechaun showed up and then a unicorn came over and then, and it's just like whatever they think of next. And what makes people like George R. R. Martin such great authors is that everything that happens is not and then, it's like, because this happened, this happened. And then because that happened, this next thing happened. It's like all consequences. Mm -hmm. We're starting to get more into that realm where like, because the Hebrews <laughs> were multiplying, the Egyptians got jelly. And because <laughs> then they had a new king, he ordered the deaths of all the male children. And because mm -hmm. of that, you know, and it goes snowballs. Yes. It yes. makes it way more interesting. Yeah, I'm into it. It's pretty good. <laughs> way better than Genesis. I hope people, <laughs> if they can make it through 18 episodes of Genesis to get here, maybe they'll <laughs> <laughs> enjoy it. All right. Chapter three. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and Dude. the bush was not consumed. The burning bush. The burning bush. So it's sitting there burning, but it's not turning black or to ash. It's just hanging out. Okay. You know anything about this story? Uh, I've just heard the term burning bush. I have no idea what it means. 
So I've noticed that it said, so I've always heard that this is when God speaks to Moses, is through the burning bush. But it just said the angel of God spoke to Moses. Mm -hmm. And this has happened a couple times already where God has used angels to speak to various people. And I just wonder if that's supposed to be God or if it really is an angel of God. Like, why do people... Is it supposed to be his... It's supposed to be, like, his servants, right? Or his, like... I guess so, but I've just not never... Not his servants, but his, like, his right-hand man, you know? Yeah, but I've just never heard anyone say that. Everyone always, like, tells this story, like, God spoke to Moses. I guess they're just assuming that what the angel told them is God's word, so God, vis-a-vis. Yeah. Spoke to Moses. Just cutting out the middle man. I guess so. Sus. That's sus. I mean, but like, wasn't wasn't Lucifer an angel? As far as I know, we haven't gotten to Lucifer yet. What if this is Lucifer just being like... <laughs> he doesn't say tricks. which angel of God. does not say which angel. Yeah. You know what he says? Or is this where he gives him the Ten Commandments? Maybe. I don't know. Or does he tell him it's time to get out of Egypt? I don't know. One of them. Let's find He's going to tell him one of them. <laughs> and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. <laughs> 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 Sorry, is that some, some poor writing? <laughs> we just were complimenting the writing. We got to <laughs> be fair and also point out like, <laughs> he has to say aloud what he's going to do. That's pretty funny. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. Does God, wait, does God really call Moses the way a parent calls a kid to come down to dinner? Well, it doesn't have like vocal instructions. <laughs> And here it just says, Moses, Moses. That's my interpretation. And he said, here I am. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, mother of dragons, and... (laughs) 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 I was just thinking that. Oh, man. I just, like, knocked my glass onto the Bible like it was empty. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, and a large Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Interesting. (laughs) I just think it's pretty funny. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Okay, so why don't they just go where, like, nobody else is? He's like, keeps telling them, he's like, go to the land of the Canaanites. God damn it. I keep putting you guys there. He's told them like a hundred times, like that's yeah. where they're supposed to be. Yeah. 
At least he told Abraham, and then he told Isaac, and then he told Jacob. Yeah. Okay. I know. And now he says, go back to the land of the Canaanites. So once they went to go get Joseph, they stayed in Israel just because Israel, I mean, they stayed in Egypt because it, Egypt had food? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think Joseph, like, rigged it so they could all be there and get food and not have to deal with the horrible famine because Joseph was kind of in charge. Yeah. Running the show. Okay. And now God's like, no, you got to go back. What have y'all been doing all this time? Yeah. <laughs> God was playing block puzzle. <laughs> and Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. <laughs> what? Popeye. I am what I am, what I am, what I am. <laughs> I am what I, I am what I am? I am that I am. I am that I am. Okay. That's stupid. So, you know the Red Wall books? Uh-huh. There is a character named uh, Matthias or something. Yes. Or Matameo or so, whatever the... I, there was a uh, riddle in that book that had I am that I am, and they had to re-scramble the letters and come up with his name. So I guess that's from here. Oh, Another reference. Interesting. Yeah. We'll have to ask and find out. Yes. But what were you saying? Oh, I just said it was a stupid response. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I guess it, there could be stupider responses, but it's, I don't know. Yeah. It was just a weird response. Well, I thought he, like, according to Indiana Jones, he does have a name. Because <laughs> he's just not telling it. What do you mean? According to Indiana Jones... Yeah, so uh, remember the last crusade, whenever he has to like step on the letters of the like name of God, and he has to spell out like. How do you remember this? I don't remember <laughs> this. It's a pretty good movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it in probably at least twenty years. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty good movie. That's a pretty memorable part. I mean, I think he steps I remember on, like, stepping on stuff. Yeah. But... He, like, steps on the wrong letter because, like, the Y, the J makes a Y noise or whatever. I don't remember Steps on the wrong detail. one and then gets on the right one. It's pretty cool. Oh, well. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name for ever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go, and gather the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto the land flowing with milk and honey. <laughs> and they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come Thou and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt, and ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now 
Let us go, we beseech thee. Three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. <laughs> that was a weird side note. <laughs> he's like, go and tell them, and then, yeah, I know he's not probably not got all his lessons, so then I'll probably have to smite him. <laughs> Give a little smite, yeah. and then he'll I feel maybe like he's kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does sound very human, though. Like, just this conversation is like, well, go and tell him, and he's not going to believe you. <laughs> So I might have to punish him a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a weird uh, interaction. Yeah. He says, go, and then he'll let you go. All right, we got some more God here. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor, and of her that sojourneth in her house, jewels of silver, and jewels of gold, and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons, and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. So he's just, <laughs> all the women are just going to steal from their neighbors? I guess so. <laughs> when you leave? <laughs> It <laughs> sounds like. And by the way, before you go, make sure you tell your wives to like, you know, put it in your purse. Put it in your purse. <laughs> put it in your purse. <laughs> oh, home alone reference. Thought you'd appreciate nice that. Nice reference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so all right. Nice start to Exodus. Yeah. Yeah, some cool shit going down. Yeah, Moses is really going at it and god is right behind him yeah yeah this is pretty cool we got a uh, bad guy yeah like pharaoh's Fair. real bad real bad moses hasn't done anything bad yet right like, i mean he's he still... killed the egyptian oh a little murder but he was protecting murder. somebody yeah like he was like he came across like an egyptian like killing somebody else yeah i want to classify I mean... that as self-defense i'm still on moses' side as of now yeah I don't think he's really done anything bad yet. No. So far, so good. <laughs> What's your prediction on, do you think everybody's going to believe him when he gets goes and starts telling people, hey, no, I talked to God? No way. Because God, even God doesn't think they're going to believe him. Even God was like, you're well, going to I mean, him. do you think the Hebrew people are going to believe him? The Hebrews? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're all going to be, yeah. Gotta get out of here. Yeah, he said, go get all the Hebrews. So I think that's what's going to happen. He's going to go get everybody, and then they're all going to go to Egypt. Or, sorry, go to the Pharaoh. And they're supposed to tell him that they God told them to make a sacrifice. And then, but that's it. He says, we're going to need to go away for three days into the wilderness and make a sacrifice. It's like, it's a total, what like, trick. What does that mean? It's a trick. It's a trick. That he's setting up for sure. Oh, okay. Like they're gonna pretend like they're like not they saying go. like we're going away forever. They're saying like, oh, God, our God told us we got to go make a sacrifice. Right. And really, they're just gonna leave. Really, they're just gonna escape. And, and go while back to the land they're the telling the Pharaoh all this, the women are gonna be stealing. Yeah, the women are <laughs> <laughs> filling their purse with the, <laughs> the nice. nice silverware nice. <laughs> of their neighbors. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Good start to Exodus. I'm into it. This is it's pretty fun. good. Yeah, it's way better than Genesis. I gotta say. Oh. Already. Yes. I hope it stays this way. Me too. Yeah. All right. Well, any last words? I don't think so. All right. Everybody go out and buy your copy of Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Maybe we could do a book club on that one later. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Stay dumb. Bye. Stay dumb.